So far, all of our analysis has used data on a bunch of units at a single point in time. That's called cross-sectional data. Often, we actually observe units at multiple points in time. That's called a panel data set or a longitudinal data set. So in the next few modules, we're going to look at how we can use panel data to get at new ways of learning about causality. So to start, we're going to look at an applied example, a very controversial question. Does the death penalty have a deterrent effect? So because we have the death penalty in the US, or some states do, maybe someone who is going to commit a crime, wants to murder somebody, is going to say, eh, never mind, I'm not going to do that because I'm worried about getting executed. That's what the deterrent effect is. So, some people have proposed that this is one reason we should have the death penalty, because it has a deterrent effect. But is that claim empirically true? Well, to answer that, let's look at some data. In 1972, the U.S. Supreme Court case Furman versus Georgia imposed a de facto ban on the death penalty. So from 1972 on, the death penalty was illegal in every single state. In 1976, however, the case Gregg versus Georgia overturned the previous case. And at that point, the death penalty became legal in 32 states and illegal in the rest of the states. So here's the data we've got. We're looking at our outcome variable is homicide rates per units, uh, per 100,000 residents. Our treatment variable is whether a state has the death penalty or not. So here our units of analysis are states. So in 1975, the death penalty was illegal in every single state. In 1977, it was legal in some states and not others. So the untreated states, oh sorry, the untreated states, these are the states where it was illegal in both years. The treated states are where the death penalty was legal in 1977 and illegal in 1975. So for the treated states, we see that in 1975, the homicide rate was 10.3, and in 1977, it was 9.7. And in the untreated states, the homicide rate in 1975 was 8, and in 1977, it was 6.9. Now, there are three different kinds of analysis we can do to use this data to learn about the causal effect of the death penalty. So the first approach is to ignore the fact that we actually have panel data and just look at the 1977 data and do a contemporaneous comparison. Just compare this number, the homicide rate for the treated group, the states that have the death penalty, with this number, the homicide rate for the states that don't have the death penalty. So if we do that, we see that we get the homicide rate for the treatment group minus the homicide rate for our control group, and that's going to be positive 2.8. So this suggests that the death penalty actually increases homicides if we just do a contemporaneous comparison. So this right here is the average outcome in the treatment group, and this right here is the average outcome in the control group. The difference is an estimate of the average treatment effect of the death penalty. But hold on a second. This number, if we're going to believe that it's a true causal effect, what assumptions do we need? Well, we need that the death penalty is randomly assigned to states, that there's no systematic difference between states that have the death penalty and states that don't. But that assumption probably isn't true. Probably the states that have the death penalty are different in some systematic way from the states that don't. For example, maybe these states passed the death penalty precisely because they thought that they were going to have high homicide rates or they were having problems with this, and they passed the death penalty to try to lower it. That would cause a correlation just like this, where we see that states with the death penalty have higher homicide rates, where sta whereas states without the death penalty have lower homicide rates. So this contemporaneous comparison, probably we don't believe it. Probably this is not the actual causal effect of the death penalty. The second approach is to do a before and after comparison. We just look at the states who had the death penalty in 1977 and compare their outcome when they had the death penalty with their outcome when they did it. So when we do that, we see that when they had the death penalty in 1977, their outcome was 9.7. And when they didn't, their outcome was 10.3, with the difference of minus 
0 0.6. So we see that in 75, they didn't have the death penalty, and they had a 10.3 homicide rate. Then in 77, they had the death penalty, and homicides went down by 0.6. So this suggests that the death penalty actually lowered homicide rates, right? Because they didn't have the death penalty, then they had it, and homicides went down. So that's one way we can use the panel data dimension of our data to learn a causal effect. But do we really believe this number? Is this really a good estimate of the causal effect of the death penalty? Well, what do we need for this assumption, for this to be a good estimate? We need that nothing changes over time except the treatment status. That because we want to conclude that this difference over time is due solely to the death penalty and could not be explained by anything else that's changing in these states over time. Well, that assumption is probably not correct because, for example, if you look over here at the untreated states, their treatment status doesn't change over time. So if nothing else was changing over time, then we should see 8.0, 8.0. But actually, their homicide rate also changed over time, even though their treatment status didn't. The death penalty is illegal in both years. So this assumption that nothing else is changing over time that would be enough to let us interpret this as a causal effect doesn't seem to hold. The problem with the before and after comparison is that other things are changing over time, not just the treatment status. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to introduce the common trends assumption. We're going to assume that anything that's changing over time that's affecting our outcome variable is affecting the treatment group and the control group identically, exactly the same. That the trend in these unobserved things that are changing over time is the same. It's common to both groups, the common trends assumption. Now, why is this helpful? Well, that means that if we look at our control group here and we look at the difference in their outcome over time, so that's 6.9 minus 8.0. That gives us the common trend, minus 1.1. So there's a trend, a downward trend in homicides in general over time in all states of minus 1.1. Now let's look at the treatment group. Over here in our before and after comparison, we saw that homicides went down in this group by minus 0.6. But by the common trends assumption, we know that homicides in general were going down by minus 1.1. So here, homicides actually went down by less than they did in the control group. So the only explanation here, because of our common trends assumption, is the fact that these people were treated. So the reason that homicides went down by less here is because of the death penalty. Okay, so let's write that out in in uh, algebra. So here we've got the difference in outcomes over time in the treatment group. And then I'm going to subtract off the common trends assumption, or su subtract off the common trend, which I can do by the common trend assumption, and that's going to give me positive 0 0.5. So this is my estimate of the causal effect of the death penalty on the homicide rate. It suggests that having the death penalty actually increases your homicide rate by 0.5. And why is that? Well, if they, these states hadn't have had the death penalty, they would have been exactly like these states, just by the common trends assumption. And what happened in these states? Well, homicides went down by minus 1.1. But over here, they didn't go down by quite that much. What explains the difference? Treatment. And treatment's the death penalty. So that's this analysis. The difference between the treatment group and the un untreated group is, point, is this 0.5. The death penalty actually increases ho the homicide rate. That's our conclusion. So if you were to go over to these states who are untreated and implement the death penalty, if we believe this number, that would say that homicide rates would actually increase. Now, this idea of having assuming common trends and then removing it from before and after comparisons is the main idea behind all the ways we're going to get at causal effects by using panel data.